Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the January 5th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I will go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices, all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. The Dow's up 131, S&P 17, Nasdaq's up 44, Russell's up 5, Semis are up 33. Spot Volatilinix is still above its 50-day exponential moving average. We'll watch that level. Uh, I don't recall what it is off the top of my head, but it's trading out at 25.8788. Gold's up seven bucks at 1954. Silver's up 31 cents at 2768. Lights we crewed up two dollars and twenty-eight cents. So we got plenty to look at. We have a few a few requests that have come in, but why don't we just get to the uh, general market? Sorry that I wasn't able to be with you yesterday. Life was happening for me. We had all kinds of internet and equipment issues, and uh, but luckily we got those uh, back up and running by about 7:30, 8 o'clock last night. But whew, you know when you're without your total system out there, flying blind. And I tried doing things from uh, Panera, but Panera's Internet does not run Stevie's tools out here. So uh, in any event, uh, let's take a look at the markets, what they're doing. So first of all, uh, those of you that are longtime listeners, you are anticipating or expecting. One of the things you didn't do yesterday coming into the close was go short. Those of you that are longtime listeners. And why is that? Why is that that folks that are longtime listeners based upon yesterday's trading – with price moving lower, I mean, it was down, what, six, 700 points at one point in time inside the Dow. But why would you not have taken a short position like many people may have done going into yesterday's close? Yeah, the uh, the reason is because that spot volatility is at a one-day rate of change greater than 10%. So that's the very first thing. Now, maybe you're not familiar with that. If you take a look at this chart, you can go chart this yourself. Top panel is the S&P. Center panel is the spot volatilinix, the red line on that is the 50-day exponential moving average. And below that shows the rate of change, the one-day rate of change out there. And on a one-day rate of change that you have greater than 10%, for reasons that I can't uh, describe or, or, or clearly articulate to you, I just know by marking those specific dates, days, a comparing um, uh, price action, the follow it used to be within 48 hours over the last several years. It's been typically within a 24 hour period of time, and usually it's not too long after the equity futures open back up. But to expect or anticipate a bounce or bottom, so that's the very first thing. If you see a one day rate of change greater than plus 10 percent, please, as you're going into that close, do not step on the gas and try and get in the short side. Instead, what you might want to do is take a look at maybe selling into a counter trend rally. And that's what we're going to go and take a look at here. So that's the first element. Another element that would have kept you from doing that, putting this together with what transpired yesterday. Now, because I wasn't here with you, I couldn't share this information. 
the information being new profiles that were forming. And they have taken hold inside of the ES and the NQ. The daily profile inside of the Dow, that remains. It's been in place for over a week out here. The same thing is true with regard to the Russell 2000. What you're looking at are the light blue lines that are on my chart. Tom O'Brien, and I owe him you know, a few bucks out here because he is the one that generated the phrase, to the best of my knowledge, if you can't bust him down, price will try to bust him up. Now, in Tom's case, I believe he primarily uses that with regard to swing point analysis and volume. Here, what you and I are looking at is where are, where is, where is, where are, ooh, I'll eventually get it out here, where is support? Where is support? Where are the buyers hanging out? Where are the sellers hanging out? And that is the cool thing about the TAS market profiles. If you take a look at the ES mini yesterday, it went down, and this is about a close basis, but intraday price got below the bottom of that bullish structured profile, 3663. But by day's end, price was back inside that bullish structured profile. Now, right now, and we'll see what the close is today. We've got three hours to go out here. But right now, what we can see is the ES Mini is trading well above the center of its bullish structured profile. The center is really not in the center. That's why we give it the bullish structure. It is closer in proximity to the bottom than it is to the top. And what that means is there are more buyers located between the price area of 36.63 and 36.87. Typically, when price is able to close above the center of a bullish structured profile, not one tick, not two ticks, you know, but a decent close. Right now, we're decently above that level. We're 3709 and 3687 is the number. Typically, what transpires then is you get a bounce up to the top of that profile. So we're at 3709. Another 40 points to the upside is where the ES Mini is signaling to you and I at 112 in the afternoon where it wants to head to. What could get in the way? Well, it turns out that the profile that formed yesterday inside the NQ is actually bearish in structure. So when something is bearish in structure, it can be the center, which is not in the center, because, again, it's closer to the top than it is to the bottom. It's at 12,828 versus the top at 12,916. That is the sell zone range out there, 12,828 to 12,916 out there. So what could get in the way of the ES Mini making it all the way to the top? It could be the NQ, but you want to keep an eye on both of these out here. Um, if you take a look at the Dow, it's just in a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its daily profile. That runs from 29.724 to 33.33, and price isn't too far away from that 33.33 level. Take a look at the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 today has tested both the bottom and the top of its profile. Now, both the YM, the Dow, Russell 2000, are equally there it's an equally weighted profile it's neither bullish in structure or bearish in structure the center is pretty much in that dead smack dab in the center but it's close enough to it to say we've got an equally distributed profile out here and what we just have going on right now is a move to the uh, with a consolidation inside that profile now in the case of the russell 2000 we'll have a pretty decent message here by about one well, i'd say by about two o'clock why two o'clock well, as we go to this breakout here, I lost that chart. Golly. Well, that's okay. We can do it like this. If you take a look at the 30-minute Russell 2000 equity future contract, the current bar that ends at 130 is going to be bar number nine. If this is going to form a short-term top, it'll happen by 130 or 2 o'clock, the bar following bar number nine. Steve Rhodes with TF and We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Do you have broken or unwanted jewelry, diamonds, watches, coins, silverware, and other collectibles that you would like to turn into cash? Tiger Precious Metals and Stones will pay fair market value. We make it easy to turn your precious metals that are sitting around in your house into cash. Call Andy now at 727-329-8245, and he will walk you through our safe and secure process. Andy has been in the business buying and selling precious metals for over 15 years. Call Andy now at 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. That have come in. So let's... Uh, Hello, hello. This is strange. Very strange. Very strange. So uh, can you guys hear me in the den? Gary, okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, so let's go to a couple of uh, – oh, you know, I was talking about Russell 2000. Let me just finish up on that chart, and then we will uh, continue on. So if we take a look at the Russell 2000 equity future contract out here, there's really two patterns that are in play. Uh, one pattern is the TD9 count. We're in bar number nine as we speak right now. That's the high of the pattern. So this could be a top. Now that high can form a bars eight, nine to the bar following nine. So you have a pretty decent feel come um, come two p.m. Whatever the high, is, so whatever the high is at two p.m. And what I mean by that is whether it's bars nine or bar, the bar following nine. Whatever's the high of the bar that's closing at one thirty or two p.m. The highest high of those two bars out there. That'll be the key number you want to have down on a pad of paper. If price closes above that level on a 30 minute time frame, well, first it's telling you about a strong momentum move to the upside. That strong momentum move would then target 1994. Now, if it targets 1994 and it pulls that off, price is going to be above the top of that daily profile out there. Again, I'll pull that up on my screen. Uh, the top of that daily profile is at the 1980, and that's called 1981, which is exactly where we're trading right now. Um, Okay, so so we've got that out there, at least with regard to the equity futures contracts. And I'll show you the uh, I'll show you some of the other charts associated with that. We'll take a look at daily and weekly out here. But some of the questions that have come in, one was about GBTC Bitcoin. The question is, the question is, what are the what are your system telling you buy sell hold thanks what are the Tom DeMarc counts out here so here is the daily time frame we'll go ahead and pull over and try to pull it over here 
uh, Bitcoin Trust, GBTC. By the way, here is the three different uh, time frames. And what you're going to see is that price is above the daily, weekly, and monthly profile. So there's no resistance from that standpoint. We do know there is resistance at its all-time high, and that's at the 3871 level out there. And likely price is targeting that level. Would I sell? No, there's no sell signal yet. At least we take a look at this. Would I buy coming into resistance? No. But would I hold? Absolutely. Now, if price breaks out above that, maybe a different thing. But, of course, you were also asking, hey, what are the patterns associated with price moving higher? With regard to the Tom DeMarc counts out here, it's only going to be in bar number four on a daily basis of its TD9 count. Price is stretched. If there were to become a bearish reversal candle, if there also were to be a close below its oscillator and change line, that's at 3307. That would tell us about a uh, at least a short-term top that's in place, taking price back to the 2412, 2081, 1986 level. Am I saying that's what we have right now? I am not saying that. But if we did get a bearish reversal candle and we did get a close below the oscillator and change line, then yes, that's what the charts would be communicating to you and I. I've got wave number seven here, Peak. So that would be another reason. That's uh, letter G on my screen. That would be another reason why you wouldn't um, enter a new position at this stage. Would you sell? You, you could, but we'd really have to go down to some short-term time frame charts to get some type of signal there. Let's just change this from a daily to a weekly. The oscillator and change line is going to be based on the daily time frame. It will not change automatically. But just to give you the wave counts that we've got out here, uh, or the Tom DeMarc counts, this is going to be bar number five on a weekly basis, so that's not a topping signal. From a monthly standpoint out here with regard to grayscale, Bitcoin, uh, is going to be in bar number seven out there. So i uh, watch to see what happens as it gets up to those highs. So we could take a look at, let me get this back to the daily. We'll take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, just see if there's anything out here. This is going to be the U.S. dollar index that pops up on our screen first, but we can change this to the grayscale Bitcoin trust out here. And it had a TD9 count top, didn't last, price moved sideways for basically an uh, hour, one hour. And so this suggests that price wants to continue moving higher. So in summary, we would see that, that we would say the charts are telling us that GBTC wants to go test those highs out there, Peak. So I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. In our YouTube channel, there was a question about, uh, was it Platinum? Platinum. So let's go take a look at the uh, Platinum Futures charts out here. Uh, give me a moment just to get back there. There, there, there. I've got to keep going back, I believe. Financial Futures, get to Platinum. And the question is, will it hit 1440 or 1140? 1140. Must be 1140 out there, which is the high from yesterday. Yesterday's high was 1142. So when we take a look, and it's really the the, uh, the the April contract is the one that we should be looking at. So that's on our right-hand panel. We know that price is above the daily chart out here. Let's go take a look at, however, let's go take a look at a moment here. To, no, I don't want to do it there. I'm going to do it here. So we've got the platinum. We've got the April contract. I'm going to pull it up on my other charts just to see what other signals we might have out here. So in answering the question for our YouTuber out here, yes, it does appear based upon the market profiles that price should go tag yesterday's high. So that was the first question. As we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here with Stevie's other tools, we can see that price did make wave number seven. That's a letter G. Price is moving higher, moving uh, uh, moving higher with less relative energy, but no bearish reversal candle as of yet. Price above the top of that daily profile. What this is telling us is that price should go at least target yesterday's high. Whether we'll take it out or not, that's not going to generate a, a signal for us. On the weekly time frame, uh, may I, you know, I, I have to go to the continuous contract for the weekly to get enough data. Let's go look at the opening range, the 30 minute time frame chart out here for platinum. See what kind of signals we have out here. I can see an A to B equals CD pattern. I do not see a bearish reversal candle as of yet. Everything looks bullish here, and that suggests that price goes and tests yesterday's high. Yesterday's high was capped off with wave number seven, a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Uh, so you'd be looking for something like that again at a high, but we don't have that. So, yes, platinum is signaling to you that it wants to continue to move higher. We had a request to go take a look at Overstock. O-S-T-K, I believe, is the uh, ticker symbol. That was uh, sent in by Dennis G., Dennis uh, writes in and says, can you take a look at OSTK? We've got that up on our screen. I don't own it, 
but have been waiting for a good entry point to buy it. So he's looking for an entry point. Let's go look at the daily time frame. We're not that interested in the uh, 30 minute time frame, at least not just yet, not unless we get a good signal on the daily time frame. Well, what signals do we have? So interestingly enough, yesterday is something you didn't want to see necessarily, Dennis, which was a close below its TD9 breakout level at 51.10. That was bar number seven. Today is going to be bar number eight. It's a lower low. I've got wave number seven. We know that that can be a potential bottoming signal, but that won't be confirmed unless there is a higher low than today's lower low tomorrow. So we don't have that. We also know that, that bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine can be an identifier for a change in trend, for a, a bottom or a top out here. So knowing that it's below a key level of support, I would first say hold, hold your horses just yet. Let's wait to see how the next day or two plays out here from a pattern perspective. We might change our mind if price closed above Stevie's oscillator and change line, currently at 53.19, but it's not doing that just yet. So Dennis, I'm going to say hold for the next couple of days out there. There may be an opportunity. If we look at the weekly time frame chart out here, the weekly says, hey, I'm below support, so not so fast just yet. And uh, we'll take a look at the monthly chart when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be back in a few. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006. And like many of you, was drawn in by... Bam! As well as... Whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Overstock. Uh, OSTK is the uh, ticker symbol for uh, Dennis G, who's looking to uh, enter a position. So here's what we're looking at now, uh, Dennis, and that is on the monthly time frame chart, which didn't have a topping pattern, but it doesn't matter. Price still pulled back. But what it's done is price has pulled back to that green oscillator and change line, which is currently printing out at about 40, 50, 40, 4830 is the actual print. So ideally, what would happen is over the course of the next two days, we get that solid TD9 count bottom and price would also hold the monthly oscillator and change line. If price were to close below that monthly oscillator and change line, granted, we're just in a brand new month out here at 48.30. But if it begins trading below that, that would keep us caution and out of uh, entering that trade. But if it does hold that level, you would have a reason to uh, to take a position out there. It doesn't guarantee the results, but you would certainly have a, a solid reason to go ahead and take that position. Now, here what we can see in the case of overstock is that it is, uh, generated a TD9 count topping signal. Did it about a couple hours ago. The actual time was, was this today or yesterday? At uh, noon. Yeah, a couple hours ago. So at noon, it was a bar following bar number nine. We can see that price made it right up to its TD9 breakdown resistance level, 53.39. And price has backed off just a bit. We can see the oscillator and change line has changed colors recently. We should see price and that line catch up to each other. But here's what we do know. If overstock Closes about 53.39 for two consecutive 30-minute bars. Well, that's telling us that price is going to make a run for the 58.40 level out there. We don't have that just yet. Uh, we don't have a – so even if, let's say it was ideal, Dennis, and we had a buy uh, – pattern uh, that we could uh, could use on the daily time frame the monthly says hey it's held the oscillator and change and we go to the 30 minute time frame chart we wouldn't have you enter right now now if price did close above 53.39 you could then say okay we've got a momentum move to the upside a breakout um and it would be the second one and that would tell you oh, okay this has got some now the thing here though dennis is that bar number nine bar number nine on the daily time frame won't complete till tomorrow. And it's closed in order to get that TD9 count pattern must be below 5154. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, 5154. So you really don't want it to the extent, from a pattern standpoint, if price closes above that, then you've lost the pattern. Uh, and we'd have to search for something else out there. It does have wave number seven, but you like to have that TD9 count there as well. So, Dennis, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. The next question here, oh, I see we've got a few that are lining up. Mike um, Mike M. in Sarasota. Uh, radio show questions, V and when, scratch planetar. So, uh, Mike, I'm just going to go right to the charts and uh, tell you what it is that they're signaling to us. So, V is Visa out here. In the case of Visa, we're on the daily time frame, trading out at 214, uh, pulled back and is testing the top of its daily profile, which is at 213.71. Do I have a top? Not really. It's made its uh, third higher high here uh, since the uh, uh, August time frame. Don't have a topping pattern. I don't have an A to B equals CD. I don't have a diddly, so to speak. But if price closes below 213.71, what this would be signaling to us is a move down to the 208.18 area. That would be the bottom of its uh, daily profile. No other signals on the daily time frame for us. On the weekly time frame, um, no additional information there. It still is bullish. Price is above its oscillator and change line. The monthly has got wave number seven. That's letter G, although... Was this month a higher high so far? Let's see. Last month, the high was 220.39, and the high 220.25. Nope. So it's got to wave number seven is still in place out here, but price would have to get below 212. Really, I'd have to say 209, the top of that monthly profile. So what is the message here from uh, Visa? Let's look at that monthly chart again. Did we look at monthly? Oh, I just deleted the monthly chart. Okay, we won't look at the monthly um, darn, I wish I hadn't done that, but uh, I did. Uh, so, you know, uh, Mike, what we don't have here is a topping pattern, and uh, I just don't have a good read. Every now and then, I just don't have a, a good read here. It's still 
it's still slightly bullish again as long as price holds 213.71 let's go see if win resorts uh makes it a little bit easier on uh, stevie's eyes out there to be able to assist you with some type of pattern as we pull up a uh, win resorts w-y-n-n is the uh, ticker symbol out here we can see on its daily time frame this did confirm a rose momentum indicator top and today, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of that daily profile is 108.20. This is signaling to you and I that price is going to target the 91.40 level. 91.40 is its TD9 breakout area. That's the message from the daily time frame. Weekly time frame may have something else to say. I don't know. But as we take a look at it, we can see that the oscillator and change line changed colors about four or five weeks ago. We know the phenomena associated with that that price and that line catch up to each other. So what Wynn is telling us, based upon the daily topping pattern, if price closes below 108.20, it is just communicating to you and I that price should pull back into that 100 area. Now, price and the oscillator and change line can uh, that, that can have a meet and greet in a number of different ways. It could be a move sideways in price while the line moves higher. Uh, so you can use that as a uh, is a general area, the 100.09. But it does suggest to you and I that price wants to continue moving back. Now, on a 30-minute time frame chart, this did generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. You're in bar number eight of a TD9 count out here. That says that when, if this is just a little bit of a counter trend rally, that counter trend rally should end by, let's see this bar number eight, uh, 130, by 230. I'd say by 2.30 out there. I don't know if the pattern will actually form. I won't know that for another hour. But uh, when should, if this is just a counter trend rally, and that's what the daily and the weekly are selling, saying to you and I, uh, that counter trend rally should be over with by about uh, 2.30. Let's see, this would be give me 8, 2.30 by 3 o'clock, by about 3 o'clock uh, this afternoon. So, Mike, thanks so much for writing in and waiting an extra day to get some feedback. Johnny D writes in, and Johnny says, uh, would like your analysis on uh, UNG and BMY, support and resistance points. Currently no position looking to go along both. So if we take a look at the UNG, what we really want to do is we want to take a look at natural gas. So let's first go take a look at natural gas out here. And that is... I believe it's trading right into resistance as we speak. And resistance is the top of its daily profile. So here is the uh, here is the February natural gas contract out here. And uh, you can see that the top of its profile is 2.724. Now, that's resistance. And so, Johnny, I would never suggest that you buy resistance out here. Uh, granted, price is pulled back just a tad, but I would still I would hold off. Now, where would be a buy area for you? Well, if natural gas back gets back into the 257, 262 area, that would be your buy zone because that is a bullish structured profile. So that is where support is. If you saw a close below 257, you might say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take a small loss if you did get into UNG because price could pull back further. So price run into resistance. If price were to close above 272, well, then we have a different story. So I won't go take a look at the UNG. Um, not because I won't, but because really we don't need to at this stage of the game. We need we need natural gas to give us more information. Now, we'll take a look at the short-term time frame for natural gas when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. Be back in just a few minutes. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Are you looking to buy or sell gold, silver, platinum, coins, or bullion? We can help. At Tiger Precious Metals and Stones, we specialize in the buying and selling of gold, silver, as well as collectible U.S. and foreign coins. We not only buy our unwanted or broken jewelry, but you can trade that in for gold and silver coins too. Call Andy now at 727-329-8245 for a quote over the phone and to lock in the current market price. Call us now at 727-329-8245. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So as we look at the uh, futures contracts on my screen, the bottom panel, you've got the uh, February, March, April, and May contract. You can see that each of them have done the same thing, which has uh, moved up and tested the uh, top of its uh, daily profile. So all those contracts here are trading in resistance. What we don't have is any clear signal. I don't have a clear signal on a 30-minute time frame uh, for natural gas out here. Uh, but price uh, is likely targeting could be targeting $2.61 out there. That's its 30-minute TD9 breakout level. Um, so I'm still going to suggest to uh, hold off on entering the long position inside of natural gas, just not a clear signal of a bottoming signal on a short-term time frame. The other request was to take a look at uh, BMY, I believe it was. Yeah, John, you want to take a look at BMY. So let's go see what BMY is. Let's put up our three different time frames out here and daily, weekly, and monthly. BMY is uh, Bristol Meyer Squibb. They're trading with inside its daily profile. So consolidation between 6019, 6210, consolidating between its weekly profile. 5858, 6309, trade above the top of its monthly profile. Let's go ahead and bring over Bristol Meyer Squibb, a daily time frame chart. See if there's any other signals out here on my white background charts. The daily basis shows us what? Hmm. So it's got a TD nine count bottom. That formed out here uh, in the early part of December. And uh, just took price up towards a resistance level of 63.75, 74. Was not able to get all the way up there. It's just really consolidating. So at this stage of the game, uh, Johnny, you're understanding you want to know our support and resistance as well. It's 62.10 to 60.19. We sort of covered that. I uh, don't have a clear signal here. But if you were looking to buy, 60.19 would be the area to consider. Let's see what the weekly time frame is. So the weekly have got the same type of consolidation sideways out here. Nothing more clear there. Monthly chart. Monthly chart looks pretty good. When I say looks pretty good, uh, price has held its oscillator and change line. Um, and staying above that is a bullish signal. Again, uh, Johnny, the chart for me is just not clear with regard to Bristol-Myers Squibb. So uh, 
So I'm going to say just uh, stay on the sidelines until a clear pattern arises. Thanks so much for writing in. We had a question inside the den about uh, ticker symbol K-E-Y-S. K-E-Y-S, I believe it was one of those buy, hold, or sell uh, thought process. Uh, should I stay or should I go? Well, if you take a look at the daily, Duff, weekly, and monthly time frames, well, what this tells us is everything's in breakout mode. So should you stay or should you go? No reason to go just yet, but let's pull over our other charts just to see if there's any other signals out here. Oh, uh, keys. I won't worry about the profile. So let's go take a look at its other time frame charts. Daily time frame is where we'll begin. What's the pattern out here in the daily? So in this case here, today, uh, this is generating. Let me just make sure this is updated. One second. Come on. Good Lord. Uh, it is not updated. All right. Let's try. Let's try doing this. Reload all historical data. This may take a moment or so. Um, hmm. I do not know why I didn't do that. But here's what uh, here's what I was going to share with you. So let's just pull this back. So yesterday was a Rhodes momentum indicator top. But if yesterday's high is closed above, that is 132.75. And right now, price is trading out at 132.65. So it's going to be really key out here. If price closes above 132.75, there's no reason to go. Absolutely no reason to go at all because a sell pattern will have failed in the very next day. So can't pay attention to this white background chart because it, for some reason it is not picking up. Maybe uh, maybe this set of charts here got corrupted. Let me give me one second. But it's not going to change really what, what I just stated out there. Now, if you did get a close below that level, you should be aware that you've got a momentum indicator top on the daily time frame. Does that mean you should sell? It doesn't because price hasn't even broken its oscillator on change line. I'm going to try to put this on my other, see if uh, K-E-Y-S, if uh, ah, it's not working there either. So here's what we've got to go with. You, 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 you'd stay. If price closes below yesterday's high, 132.75, just suggests that price may pull back as it did yesterday and test the top of its daily profile, 129.33. Without, with the inability of being able to see the future, and I can't see the future out there. Well, I can see it, but uh, you, you've got to, you, you should stay because you don't have an absolute sell signal without any key levels of support holding. But you've got to make that uh, make that decision on your own. 129.33 is the level that I would be watching to the downside, and of course the upside is going to be yesterday's high, 132.75. Your 132.81 out there. So Johnny, I hope that uh, helps you out. Uh, was that John? No, it was not Johnny. That was maybe Duffy, I believe, or whomever it was. My apologies, uh, but hopefully that information helps you out. Hector and Patty, the fuel injectors, uh, want to take a look at XLF for a long-term hold. XLF. So, XLF is trading above the top of the daily, above the top of the monthly, and is trading into the top of the, I'm sorry, above the top of the daily, above the top of the weekly, and trading into the top of the monthly. And that is 3138. Well, interesting. XLF uh, must just be keys in a daily issue, uh, and I'll have to go figure that out. But I'm getting the, uh, the data here for XLF, so that's a good thing. So what do we know about the XLF? Well, yesterday, Hector was a road momentum indicator confirmation, very much like the S&P, like the NQ, like the Russell 2000, like the Dow. So it's now the time to enter a long position. Price is below the oscillator and change line at 29.48. Granted, price is above the top of its daily profile and above a trend line out there. But is the daily chart suggesting now is the time to enter? And the answer to that is no. So you don't want to do that just yet. Let's look at the weekly time frame chart because of that topping signal. The weekly, very much like many of the other indices, which I believe had TD9 count tops last week, on a weekly basis, this week is very likely to be a TD9 count topping signal. In order for that to happen, though, at the end of the week, price must close above 28.46 or 29.23. The monthly time frame chart here still has its uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top. Uh, you're in bar number seven of a TD nine count pattern. It could go back and revisit those highs out there. On a yearly basis, 
you had a TD, you had a key reversal session. So this is really interesting, Hector, and I'm glad that you brought this up. If you hadn't, I, I probably would not have noticed this. So this is interesting. Key reversal candle is a bearish reversal signal. In order to have a key reversal session, you've got to be in extended condition. Well, this is a XLF is an extended condition. It's made its way all the way back to its size from 2007. Number two, the prior bar, in this case here, years, high and low needs to be taken out. That was accomplished in 2020. The third thing is price must close in the opposite direction. You now have a valid TD9 count on a yearly basis. And this is saying, Hector, right now the signals, daily, weekly, monthly, really daily, weekly, yearly, are saying stay as far away from the XLF as you hum humanly possibly can. This is signaling to us some kind of major problem, potential major problem in the finance and the banking industry. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200% in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once in a generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar. Silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Boy, time does fly. Uh, all the indices trade to the upside. Uh, Dow up 138, S&P 19. Uh, again, uh, just as a summary out here, if you take a look at uh, the Russell 2000, it's the only 30-minute uh, time frame chart. 
that has a, a topping pattern or topping signal. You can see it did complete bar number nine as we came into the 130 uh, time frame. Again, it's going to be either the high that occurred between whatever the high is between 1 and 2 p.m. That's the high to be watching. A close above that is going to suggest a move higher. And, and the Russell 2000 may then be signaling that the markets are going to move higher, whereas the Russell 2000 backs off. Maybe the other indices do as well. I don't want to completely um, draw that conclusion out there. But the Russell 2000 is nearing a topping signal. I don't think I shared these with you. Uh, if I did, uh, I want to make sure that I at least share them with you again. And that is the key levels here, the key levels of support. There's not a change in trend until you see a close below 36.63, preferably two closes below that. That's the bottom of the bullish structure daily profile in the ES Mini. Again, prices above its center, and that's suggesting a move to 37.48. The NASDAQ could easily make its way up to 12,916. That's where it should find significant resistance, the top of its bear structured daily profile. The Dow, 33,33 is where it's targeting. And the Russell, if it can close above the 1981 level, it's trading at 1981 right now, that could signal move all the way back to 2032 out there. So um, what else is there? Oh, I mentioned the 50-day exponential moving average for the VIX earlier in the show. Where is that priced at? That is priced at 2423. 2423. If the VIX closes above 2423, there's still significant downside risk potential out there. But again, watch that 3663 out there. If you saw a close below that, well, that's telling us about a change in trend and a move lower for the next several weeks out there. Next several weeks could even be the next couple of years. Folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a terrific Tuesday. I'll look forward to seeing you on a wonderful Wednesday. Take care.